in my previous avatars, I've done a bunch of different things. I have taught a course on how businesses, governments, and nonprofits can work with online communities in crowdsourcing in the US. I have built two different crowdsourcing platforms, softwares, white label softwares. I have created the Ushahidi based uh, uh, crowdsourcing driven election monitoring platform. And as I've been looking at all the presentations which, have, which we've seen yesterday and today, uh, in, uh, the connections I've been trying to build uh, in my own mind and in my own work over the last few years have come alive on how the same technologies, the same behaviors uh, can work for organizations across different uh, use cases. So what I'm going to start with is to talk about uh, how I'm seeing different aspects of crowdsourcing and similar technologies being used by entrepreneurs, change makers, and corporations. Um, I'm going to talk about a little crowdsourcing experiment we did ourselves uh, and some of the results which came out of it. And then I'm going to wrap it up by talking about three trends in crowdsourcing which can change not only social innovation but how corporations are doing innovation. So let's start. So we recently released a report last week on 10 frontiers for the future of engagement. We crowdsourced it. Um, we have our own crowdsourcing software which I helped build. Using that software, we created our own crowdsourcing network. With, uh, we have 60,000 people in publicist group. We have 3,500 people in a little agency. And we got 100 of them, 100 planners to come on this network and share inspiring projects in the area of crowdsourcing, storytelling, uh, citizenship, and, uh, uh, and social data. And then over the last 18 months, these people have been coming to this network and sharing these stories. And every week we would do a case study. We did a case study on open ministry. Um, and every quarter we would do publish all the case studies in a magazine. And then at the end of the year, we have taken all of this and put it into uh, this, this report. So this is really 18, month, 18 months of research, hundreds of crowdsourcing platforms and similar platforms. So after looking at all of this, we saw that there are 10 frontiers for the future of engagement. And crowdsourcing plays a role in many of them, all of them almost. So these are crowdfunding, behavior change games, collaborative social innovation, grassroots change movements, co-creation communities, social curation, transmedia storytelling, collective intelligence, live social experiences, and collaborative consumption. So what I'm going to do is to take it through each one of these very quickly. Yeah. And then after this talk, I'm going to tweet a link to the presentation, the report, but also a link to video case studies for all the case studies I'm going to briefly touch. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of uh, content coming after the talk. So let's look at these 10 frontiers. Crowdfunding, we've seen, we've talked about it. Tomorrow we're going to do a lot of crowdfunding. Day after tomorrow we're going to do a lot of crowdfunding again. Basically it's the idea of inspiring people to fund and support projects. Uh, we've seen examples, Kickstarter of course is the most well-known, but there's also, there are also platforms which fund nonprofit projects. There's also LoudSource which uh, funds uh, public service ads. So there are different variations in crowdfunding platforms. And organizations are now creating their own platform. So a car company has created a platform to, crowd, to help people crowdfund uh, their car purchases, which is fascinating. Yeah? An example of how innovation moves from one space to the other. Number two, behavior change games. And the idea here is that uh, how can we take some of the good things in games? Ru the game has rules, it has, um, uh, it has a objective, uh, it has uh, people competing against each other. How do we take some of those behaviors and use that to help people change their own behavior, in, either in their own life or in their own communities? A great example of this is Opower, which uh, uses a game-based uh, system to help people compare their own electricity consumption with their, with their Facebook friends, with friends, with people like themselves, with their neighbors, and therefore reduce their electricity consumption, combining sensor technology with games. A great example of a corporation using uh, a behavior change game, very much social innovation in some sense, is Nike with its fuel band and the, and the Nike Plus community. Where you wear a band, it tracks all your activity, uh, you can sync it with the Nike Plus community, and then uh, compare it with your friends, with the rest of the community, challenge them, and, and become more fit. 
Number three, collaborative social innovation. And this is the idea of working with a small group of stakeholders to create solutions, innovative solutions that are good for business, good for society. We have talked about this today a lot. Great example, we saw in the morning open IDEO, they have now 45,000 members who are creating uh, these social innovation solutions for a range of multilateral organizations. A great example from India is a corporation creating a collaborative social innovation platform. A uh, very traditional, large um, conglomerate called the Mahindra Group has been running this platform for three years. Uh, a platform to engage stakeholders in India and create an ecosystem uh, for collaborative social innovation. Number four, grassroots change movements. And this is different from collaborative social innovation because this is about engaging hundreds of thousands and millions of people into changing their behaviors in their own life or in their own community, but in a way that can get aggregated, then can get synthesized into broader social change. A great example of this is uh, Earth R, which WWF organizes uh, every year when millions of people around the world switch off their lights um, uh, for, for an hour every uh, year. And then, of course, uh, they create these lovely crowdsourced videos uh, from how different people is impacting the life of different people. An example of this, something I created in China, uh, a Dutch candy company called Perfetti uh, for a brand called Alpenliebe, which stands for sweetness in the mouth and kindness in the heart, uh, make converting that ad into act. We've been doing it for three years now. In the first year, we crowdsourced kindness stories from young people in China and uh, made it into a book. Uh, we printed 300,000 copies of the book. In the second year, every day, we crowdsourced and promoted a kindness action through an infographic for 365 days of positive power. Now, uh, Alpen Liebe is the third most popular brand on Sina Weibo, which is the microblogging platform in uh, China with 300 million users. Number five, co-creation communities. And here the idea is uh, that all of us, we are, we are in the middle of a second renaissance of creativity. All of us are expressing ourselves in different ways. And how can we get people to come together and create something which is bigger than all of this by synergizing their contributions? A great example of this second renaissance is the makers movement. And a wonderful example of that are these maker fair events um, which uh, are happening all over the world. Uh, a great example of a corporation doing this is uh, Volkswagen, uh, when they, in China, uh, created ran a fairly comprehensive crowdsourcing contest to get people to design uh, the people's car. Social curation, and I'll touch back on this a little later when I'm closing my, my presentation. Uh, people don't always need to create new content. People are already creating content on the social web and it's becoming easier and easier to search for it, synthesize it, make sense of it. And that's what social curation is. An example of this is, is one of my clients, the International Olympics Committee. They have uh, put together this wonderful platform called the Olympic Athletes Hub, where they have curated all the social profiles of Olympian athletes that to help make it easy for fans to discover, follow, and engage with these athletes. Last year, uh, a few months back, I did a project with them to explore how uh, we might connect these athletes with change makers who are using sports to promote health and education and peace and development, which is the purpose of the Olympism movement itself. A great example of social curation is Pepsi creating, by a corporation, is Pepsi creating uh, the Pepsi Life platform, where they're curating uh, the most interesting content from all over the web on popular culture and showcasing it on this interesting platform. By the way, today we launched the prototype of our own social curation software, which I helped create. And uh, we're going to launch it uh, with a software which allows something like this to happen in two weeks from now at Kant's Lines. Number seven, transmedia storytelling. This is not just telling the story that showing the same ad on different channels. A story has a story world, a universe in which it is set. It has characters, it has a plot, it has a narrative arc. And transmedia storytelling is about using different aspects of the story world on different channels in a way that it all fits together. Media companies are wonderful at doing this. Um, 
Here, for example, is uh, Harry Potter, uh, the Harry Potter franchise extending itself by going beyond books and movies and creating this alternate virtual universe uh, set in the Harry Potter world. An example of uh, organizations doing it, uh, Jay-Z uh, and, and Microsoft being tied up uh, to create this uh, wonderful uh, universe of, uh, out of the Jay-Z's Jay uh, biography called Decode. And if you watch one video, this is the most popular video whenever I do this presentation, so certainly look out for this on the CWS13 hashtag. Number eight, collective intelligence. And here the idea is that, that once you have crowdsourced something or curated something, once you've crowdsourced a lot of data, ideas, content, what do you do with it? And can you synthesize it in, in a way that, and share it back with the community in a way that helps them change their own behaviors, make better decisions. Some good examples. Google uh, has done a great job with Google Flu Trends, where they look at search traffic, uh, search, uh, tra search terms related to flu, and use them to create this real-time map of where the flu incidence is likely to happen. A great example of a company doing this, uh, Audi, when they launched a new car, created a road frustration index where they used data from, uh, uh, data from mobile phones, uh, data from uh, GPS devices, but also data from social networks to create a real-time index of how drivers on roads are feeling about driving on the road, what are road conditions. And this is a wonderful example uh, of a company creating something, uh, an ongoing project, uh, which is bigger than the product they're creating. Number nine, live social experiences. All events, whether they're an election, the Oscar ceremony, or an event like this, or a conference like this, all these events are becoming live and social. And they're becoming experiences. Uh, a great example of this is uh, a, a Philharmonic Orchestra, the Hamburg Philharmonic Orchestra, creating a virtual concert where they place different musicians at different points in the city where they could play in front of live audiences and then uh, pulled all of this together on a website where people who are not at any of these venues could see the whole experience. Great example of this, uh, yeah, funny video again, you should have a look at this, is a chocolate brand uh, inviting people to come into their stores and get free chocolates if they logged in on Facebook and made commitments uh, to do act, little acts of generosity for their friends and family members. And finally, number 10, collaborative consumption. And this is the idea uh, that of going beyond crowdsourcing ideas and content and crowdsourcing products and services. Um, just like we have an excess of brain capacity, the cognitive surplus, similarly, we have an excess of possessions. And uh, here the idea is how we can get people to share everything from cars uh, to, uh, uh, to tools. Uh, to, uh, to the free time. Great example of this um, is uh, Skillshare, which basically enables everyone, everyone in this room, to be a teacher and share lessons uh, online and get paid for it, whereas everybody else from the world can, can uh, join in and take those lessons. And a, and a wonderful example of this from a corporation's perspective is Patagonia and eBay coming together and deciding that the most green shirt is a shirt which has already been used and therefore creating a platform to enable Patagonia consumers to sell their used shirts to, to other people. Yeah. So rapid fire 20 case studies, like I said, you'll have videos of all of this on the CWS 13 Twitter stream. So you can go back and look at them. What does it all mean? So there are five patterns uh, we have seen across these hundreds of crowdsourcing and similar case studies. Number one, inspiration from everyone. This links back to what I started with. Innovation is happening. Uh, entrepreneurs are doing it. Change makers are doing it. Multilateral organizations are doing it. Civil society organizations are doing it. Corporations are doing it. Media is doing it. And each of these types of organizations would do well to look beyond their peers and look at the broader set of innovations. Number two, Shared purpose and self-improvement. For people to participate in any of these initiatives, you need to have, they need to have motivation. 
and the two biggest sources of motivation I've seen so far are a shared purpose, which is typically environment and sustainability, health and wellness, education and learning, or a motivation for self-improvement. And we need to tap into at least one, but ideally both of these motivations when we're creating these platforms. Number three, brand is media platform. A lot of the innovation is happening actually uh, by media platforms and entrepreneurs coming together. And, and brands need, companies need to become better at doing it. All types of organizations need to become better at doing it at not only creating short-term programs, but creating platforms which last for years. Number four, corporations as venture capitalists. Uh, increasingly, I'm seeing corporations create little funds, especially in the area of collaborative cons consumption and behavior change games, and, and, and have uh, a series of investments in startups which may become their main businesses in a year or two or 10 years. And finally, number five, inspiration from everywhere. Um, we have seen that innovation is happening, of course, in North America, of course, in Europe, most, mostly in the Nordic countries in Europe, uh, but it's also happening in, in, in Israel, in India, in China, in Brazil, and many, very often some of the best examples of innovation in these spaces come from these countries. Uh, what uh, uh, Mahindra is doing in India on Spark the Rice is one of the best examples of a corporation doing a three-year-long collaborative social innovation program. I haven't seen that happen anywhere else in the world. In summary, three trends in crowdsourcing. What does all this mean and what does it mean for crowdsourcing? So, I see the three interesting trends in crowdsourcing. The first trend is that on the input side, where is, what are we crowdsourcing? That is changing. And we are not only crowd asking people to create, go to a specific platform and create content or share ideas. We are also seeing, recognizing that people are sharing content and ideas everywhere on the social web anyways. And so we are seeing a model increasingly where organizations are not looking, creating destination platforms, but curating the good ideas and the good content, which is all over the web. And we'll see much more of this going forward. Number two, what are we doing with all this content and ideas? And we have seen models before uh, where we were searching for a solution, searching for a logo, searching for a uh, photo, but increasingly we are going beyond search and aggregation to synthesis. Uh, and we're looking at co-creation. How can we get multiple people to work together and create interesting solutions? We're looking at collaborative social innovation. How can we get multiple people to synthesize their ideas and, and uh, create a new solution? We are looking at uh, collective intelligence. How can we look at data coming from multiple sources and synthesize into something which gives new meaning uh, and share it back with the community? So we'll see much more synthesis happening, much less contest to find one right solution happening. And finally, the third big trend which I'm seeing is that we're not only crowdsourcing digital artifacts, we're not only sourcing, crowdsourcing ideas and content, we're now crowdsourcing money, crowdfunding, we are crowdsourcing products and services, which is what collaborative consumption is about. And we'll see that we'll do this more and more. Thank you once again for your time. I hope you had something interesting to take away from this.